So what is the JavaScript syntax? Syntax is simply the way a program is written. So we have all these different languages. For example, HTML, the hypertext markup language, has its own style that you write it in. That's the syntax. The same for PHP. The same for, let's say, lower level languages. Perhaps maybe C, C Sharp, CPP, Java, and other programming languages are written in a certain way. That's all it means. That's what syntax means. It means the way in which that language is written. And that's defined by the creators of the language. Now, there's going to be a very popular acronym. An acronym simply means each letter is a word. And that acronym is API. And it will constantly keep popping up. So we really have to understand what is an API. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and every language on the face of the planet has its own API. What is it? Well, an API is simply a collection of functions and also properties as well. So let's have a look at this. We have the window object in JavaScript. If we take a look at this in our console, we can see that a window object has many functions. These are methods. These methods were not set up by us. This was set up by the just-in-time JavaScript compiler. So this program automatically defined these functions and properties in the window object in and of itself. We didn't need to do anything for that window object to be defined. It was already defined for us. So in that case, that is the JavaScript API in a nutshell. It's just a collection of functions and properties. Likewise, we can also have APIs inside of APIs. For example, let's say I download the all popular jQuery library, which probably most of you have come in contact with. Well, jQuery attaches onto the window object and you can see here with the dollar sign jQuery is an API. It has its own collection of functions and properties. This is what's known as an embedded or extension API. So that basically means that jQuery needs the JavaScript API to define its own API. So jQuery is just using those native APIs that come with JavaScript, those native predefined functions, and then it's using those in its own functions and creating its own style. But it's not in and of itself a completely different language. It's an API extension. Therefore, it's adding on to. Or you could call it an embedded API. That's what libraries are. And whenever I create, let's say, an object within the window object because everything goes inside of that window object and we'll learn more about this later. But whenever I create an object with my own methods or my own functions and my own properties, I'm essentially creating an API. You don't have to give it a name, but you, that's what you are doing. You are creating your own API. So remember that whatever compiler and every single language on the face of the earth has a compiler that takes your human readable code into ones and noughts. And you have all different types of compilers, but you have compilers for all different languages like C Sharp, CPP, Java, and JavaScript has its own compiler. And those compilers have their own native APIs or predefined functions and properties right out of the box. Otherwise, if it didn't, you wouldn't be able to create your programs. And you can extend onto the native API by creating your own API. You could create your own library or even just creating a grouped set of properties and methods. You are creating an API. So again, to pull up the window object, simply go to your web browser, go to any web page, right click, inspect element, and then go to the console tab. And from there, you just type in window and that will bring up the window object. Now, every single window, doesn't matter whether the window is in a tab, so you have many tabs or many different separate windows, it doesn't matter. Each one of those windows or web pages has its own window object, and each window object is isolated from the other. So, in essence, one web page can manipulate the window object and add stuff to the window object that's different from the other one. So, each window, each web page has its own window object. And there you have it. You now know that every single 
human readable programming language has a compiler that compiles it into ones and noughts and it has its own set of predefined functions and properties that you can access and that makes up the native API. You also now know that you can extend onto that API or you could create an embedded API. It doesn't matter what name you give it, whether you call it an extended API or an embedded API, it doesn't matter. That API relies on the native API. And finally, you've learned about syntax, which is the way in which you write in that language. The way in which, let's say, you define a function or the way you define a loop. So that's the way it is written. And you have different programming languages that are very, very basic compared to others. For example, HTML is a simple XML style document. And then you also have CSS, which is again very, very simple. It's basically you have a selector and then you have an object with many properties and values. And then finally, you have more complex programming languages like JavaScript that give you many, many more features and much more functionality. But however, those programming languages are targeted for that specific task.